In this presentation, we're going to talk about a statutory merger in more depth. Get ready to act because it's time to account with advanced financial accounting. We will now compare what could be called a friendly merger compared to what could be called a hostile takeover. So we're obviously looking about the external expansion. We're talking about two entities that are somehow in some way merging. So we have the friendly merger, which could be the transfer of assets in exchange for stock uh, and or cash. The reason that could be more of a friendly merger type of situation is because you have the management of the two entities that are basically then negotiating over what's going to be the price and the consideration for the assets of one company to another. So you have that negotiating process. Hostile takeover, on the other hand, we have the purchase of the stock of another parent and subsidiary relationship is created and then the parent liquidates the subsidiary into the parent. So why is this going to be more of a hostile situation? You could think of this situation, of course, if you have a hostile takeover type of situation, you have one company typically going to be larger than the other company. Instead of basically going to the management and saying, okay, let's negotiate over the purchase price of possibly the assets, they could go straight to the stockholders and look to, to purchase enough stock, which would be over the 50%, to have a controlling interest. Now, once you have a controlling interest, as we've discussed in the past, now you have a, a subsidiary parent relationship. You have a parent and a subsidiary because one has a controlling interest. However, if the objective then is to take that situation and then uh, to liquidate the subsidiary because of that, you have that controlling interest and therefore the authority and the power typically to go through the liquidation process, then you're you're left with basically a merged, uh, instant, a merged company in the same kind of fashion. So the friendly merger is gonna be like, you could think of kind of a negotiation of the management the hostile takeover, you can kind of think of one company possibly going to the shareholders and not, you know, possibly, you know, bypassing management in some way, shape or form you could think of and purchasing over the 51% with the intention not of having a parent subsidiary relationship, but using that controlling interest to then basically uh, dissolve or liquidate the subsidiary into the parent resulting in just one company one merged uh, company so statutory mer merger if we're talking about a peaceful merger then we have the uh, a shareholders and then the corporation so the shareholders are here the shareholders are obviously the owners of the corporation they own the shares of corporation a and then you've got the other entity over here where we have b the b shareholders are now the owners of uh, the company the corporation b remember that the shareholders just to remember the hierarchy the shareholders basically have the right to vote on the board of directors. And one of the things they have control over is who is management and who is management. Management then will be the people that typically will be making the decision making process. So it's kind of like you can think of it kind of like a governmental situation where we vote, we vote for representatives. Those representatives then actually, you know, make the day to day type decisions. But if we have more than 51 percent of the shares of another of an entity, then we we have complete say on who is management and, there, and that obviously gives a lot of influence on you know what's going to happen in the organization okay so in this situation we have a stock plus up to 50 percent of the assets so we're going to say a then could provide some kind of consideration they're going to be purchasing from uh, b and then b is going to be giving the b's assets so in other words b is going to be giving you know most of their assets their valuable assets uh, to A in exchange for some type of consideration, which could be stock or it could be uh, cash or some type of other consideration. So A is going to be, in essence, the purchaser here, which is purchasing with something, right? You can consider it purchasing with cash. Typically, there's, you know, a stock transaction or something other than cash as well. And that'll complicate things a little bit in terms of uh, the recording of the exchange. But there, you could think of them as the buyer here. They're buying and they're buying out, in essence, all the valuable assets uh, of B uh, in this situation then B becomes in essence a shell at this point in time right B is now the valuable assets have been removed from B B is now basically a shell uh, type of, of company and then there would be an elimination of B so that means that the the uh, stock and any value any purchasing power or any purchase price that came from company A to B will now be transferred from B, whatever's left in B, in other words, whatever value is still left in B, assets minus liabilities, which will include the A stock that was transferred and any assets, the purchase price, whatever they purchased it with, if it was cash, it would be cash. That would then be going to 
the B shareholders because they're the owners of B. So B would then be liquidated at that point in time and B's shareholders would be compensated with basically whatever the purchase price was here and whatever still on the books at B's books before it was ultimately liquidated resulting in one company here. So now we have A corporation. A basically has the assets and uh, the, you know the major assets that they wanted through the negotiation of B and of course A's assets. And then we have these shareholders of A that obviously own the own the the company A still, so they they're still owned by the shareholders. And any any shares that were part of the negotiation price, part of the payment, they paid cash. A paid cash to B, and also paid possibly uh, shares, which is a common. Then those shares would then go to the shareholders of B when B was liquidated. So now we, you could have uh, A shareholders and B shareholders having some ownership in interest. The percentage would depend on the negotiation of uh, the one company and you're left with the one company, company A, which now includes the assets of, of A minus any, any consideration they gave and then the assets of B that were, were purchased in that merger process. Now, if we talk about a statutory merger that's a hostile takeover, you can see here you have the same setups. So you have A owns the shareholders here own a the shareholders for b own b and then instead of a go, instead of like a's management going to b's management and and having a, a negotiation a's management is going directly to the to the owners and you can and you can imagine if they're going to the owners and and they're trying to a really hostile takeover you see in the movies or something like that they're trying to go and buy out uh, buy out the shares and get to 51 percent before anybody knows about it they get a control and interest and whatnot or something like that but you can see how this is is basically you can it's kind of bypassing the negotiation process from management to management it's going directly to the ownership interests and are buying the the individual ownership interests so so we have that and then obviously at this point in time if a at any point in time that a corporation then buys over a majority in b which would be 51 or above a controlling interest or if there's some other ex circumstance it could be something different but typically that's going to be the number then they would then have a, a controlling interest at that point in time then we wouldn't have exactly a merger situation we'd have a we'd have a parent subsidiary relationship at that point in time you have a parent subsidiary relationship and you would have to then generally prepare the consolidated the consolidated uh, financial statements for the two organizations. However, uh, if the intention of Corporation A after having control, now they control the board of directors, they could they they control the, the voting power of the board of directors, which includes who management is, and therefore basically the big decision making processes of management. And therefore they could use that control to then liquidate company uh, B. That's why it's going to be a hostile takeover, right? So now you've got, you've got uh, the company purchased them not to not to make a subsidiary necessarily, but basically ultimately to liquidate company B, resulting in a similar situation we had before with just basically uh, A remaining, and then uh, A shareholders and B shareholders, depending on on how this whole thing went, being now the owners of the one organization, which is A. B's assets are given to A, and B is liquidated. Statutory consolidation option two. This is a situation where we create a new uh, company. So you can imagine a situation where you have the two entities, they're going to create a new entity. Then the new company issues stock uh, to both the combining entities in, in exchange for their stock. So now the, the new entity is going to issue their stock and basically the, the two existing companies that they invest are going to then exchange their stock for it. So now the new entity, the new, the newly created entity is basically the parent. So we're at this step of the situation. You have the new entity now being the, the parent because they have complete control and interest of the other two companies, if, assuming that all stock of both companies were then exchanged. So resulting in both com combining entities being temporary subsidiaries of the new company, both subsidiaries are then liquidated into the new company and become divisions. So you can imagine at that point in time, then you got the new company that is now the parent company of, of the two older companies that have traded their stocks into the parent. Then you liquidate the two prior companies resulting in just the one company resulted in one legal entity. 
Same starting point, we have A shareholders uh, owning A, B shareholders owning B. A new company is created. The new company is issuing stock. They issue stock to A and B in exchange for the stock of A and B. The result of that being that C now becomes in, in the intermediate step is going to have a subsidiary relationship that C will then become the parent at that point in time, the parent over A and B. So in other words, a shell company is being created. That shell company is exchanging the stock uh, for the stock of A and B. And by doing so becomes now the parent company uh, of A and B. And then we're going to say that A and B, now that C has a controlling interest, C can then liquidate A and B. The result being that now you have basically A shareholders and B shareholders having some type of controlling interest over the new entity, which is now going to be the C corporation. Now, obviously, we could have a third option in that in that format using a similar format that we just looked at, which is similar to option two, a statutory consolidation, but the subsidiary companies are not liquidated. So if that's the case, the new company issues stock to the shareholders of the two existing uh, corporations in exchange for their stock in the new in the new subsidiary corporations. Therefore, the end result will look something like this. Now you've got A and B still having ownership over C in essence, but C now here, the new, the new uh, company is now in a situation where they're a parent company of uh, A and B. So in other words, we just negated the last step of basically liquidating A and B into the new uh, company C. So company C has been set up. That makes uh, A and B the subsidiaries. And then, of course, you can keep that structure. You can keep that structure, whereas you, you now have the shareholders, the hierarchy being A and B shareholders own to, in some uh, ratio, the new company that's been set up, company C. And then company C has a controlling interest in the subsidiaries, which were the original companies, company A and B.